Welcome to our presentation for dual enrollment. I'd like to begin by um, having Dr. Lahara kind of say hello to everyone and start us off on our dual enrollment season. So thank you, Dr. Lahara. Thank you for having me. Uh, welcome everybody. I'd like to thank all of the family members that were able to attend with us tonight. Uh, we know that many of you are busy, but I just really wanted to say thank you. And if your students are next to you, your children are next to you, I just want to tell them that I miss them very much. I'm glad that you guys are here. I hope you get a lot of the, uh, out of this presentation. And I'd like to welcome all of the colleges and universities that are here to present for us. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Ms. Elaine McGoldrick, who will be our MC for the night. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lahara. I would like to also introduce with us um, Mrs. Charlene Collins, who's here, Director of Secondary Education, before we begin and Mrs. Lori Cohen, the guidance coordinator for Cheltenham High School. Um, we're, we'll begin with the school presentations. We have five representatives from our local partners, our college representatives, and we have a slide presentation that we'll show you as they speak. And um, we'll start with introducing you to Mr. Alex Dominguez from Arcadia University. So thank you, Alex, for being here. And um, we'll, Charlene will go down to the slides for Arcadia. One, one second, Ms. McGovern, we wanna okay. start with this. Too, so. Oh, we're gonna start with this? I thought we were, no. this, you want me to review this slide here first? Yes. Okay. Well, um, from the announcement, I, um, parents and students should know a little bit about um, this dual enrollment and this opportunity. We offer it to rising juniors or, or seniors, so sophomores and juniors, current sophomores and juniors um, are getting this information from us tonight. Our dual enrollment partners have established our requirements for dual enrollment as an unweighted GPA of 3.0 or higher and a minimum score of 500 on the reading writing portion of the PSAT or the SAT, 90% or better attendance record, recommendation from your high school counselor, and you are fulfilling your applicable, applicable graduation requirements as determined by our school district policy. And um, if dual enrollment, if this is something that um, you're um, first learning about tonight, you might want to say, what's this all about? What, how does this benefit uh, my student, my child? And um, at the, there are no particular order of importance to, to you or your family, but um, they're great savings to you on future college courses because these universities are offering their courses at a discounted rate to you. You experience college life and get a head start. You're exploring college courses in areas of interest, which is really important to um, see what might exist outside of what Cheltenham offers and an area that you might wanna study in college. And all of these uh, colleges and universities have transferable credits when you attend college. We have to say it will depend on the college you attend and their policy, but, um, and we can look into that if you um, want to uh, make sure that whatever course you take would be applicable and we can answer those questions um, through this um, presentation that you have about transferable credits. And it also strengthens your college application. College, college applications um, ask if you've ever taken a college course. So you're a, you're a, um, a strong, stronger applicant with college courses that you've taken, that you have already engaged yourself at a high level, that you've been successful in college courses. So um, it's really a plus for students all the way around. And um, also I would just kind of point out to uh, students and parents that we have a Q&A button that um, you can ask any questions at any time through the Q&A button. And at the end of our presentation, we will um, go through the questions and answer them. So if you can click on that Q&A button and you can type in your question and we'll review your questions at the end. And uh, so our dual enrollment partners, Arcadia University, Penn State Camp Abington, Manor College, Gratz College, Montgomery County Community College, and our, also Marshall University out of West Virginia has an option for online courses only. So we'll begin with Arcadia. 
And we have Alex Dominguez with us. If Alex can take over and tell us about Arcadia, our lovely neighbor. Yeah, I was about to say that we're probably the closest one of your partners from you mm -hmm. right across the street. <laughs> so yeah, Arcadia, I mean, it's a beautiful campus, beautiful school, uh, smaller school, 2,000 undergraduate students. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail. You guys can see from the presentation just some bullet points about what dual enrollment looks like at Arcadia. Very subsidized cost, over 70% discount. Uh, officially, every class is four credits. So to get a class or to get the opportunity to take college courses for the 150 per credit, um, students ultimately end up saving almost well, well over $2,000 per course that they take um, through Arcadia. So uh, students can take any 100 level, 200 level introductory courses that don't require any prerequisite courses. So, you know, an English 101, a you know, bio 101, courses that will really allow them to get that foundational experience right from when they're a high school student um, is a great opportunity for them. Uh, officially, students can only enroll though in one course per semester, um, but it is up to the student, you know, the, the flexibility on how they wanted to take that course, whether it's in person, online, um, they do have that flexibility to, to choose which option they want to. Um, the, the slide before that you guys were talking about talks about some of the requirements that students need in order to qualify for the uh, dual enrollment program. And I don't think there's anything additionally that I would add that Arcadia looks for. Um, you know, the GPA, the standardized test scores requirements are right there as well. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I think you're muted. Thanks, Alex. When families receive this uh, presentation, this Google slide presentation, and also the recording of this, if you ever want to go back, if you want to go back and, um, and check um, what you heard on this recording, that you can also at that time go and click on these um, links. So the Arcadia course schedule is a link to the summer and fall courses at Arcadia. And you'll see that in the other, uh, on the other slides as well with the other colleges. All right, thanks, Alex. And next, um, Mr. Ernest Tiamoa from Penn State. So er Ernest, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. I hope you're all keeping safe during these challenging times. Uh, so I am a admissions counselor and the coordinator for the dual enrollment program at Penn State Abington. Um, as you can see here, it kind of has the slide up. Uh, so when it comes to our dual enrollment program, I would just say that um, in these times, we're being asked to do a lot more online. So in the next coming weeks, we should have a lot more opportunities for some students for the second summer session, which will begin July 1 to August 4th. Uh, but that being said, let me kind of go down this slide. So you can see that you are able to take up to two courses per semester. So that would be between the fall or spring uh, semesters or the bimesters. But you could also take some courses during the summer. And that would be the first summer session or the second summer session. But we're currently in the first summer session. So currently, you could only take courses for the second summer session. And we kind of have the courses that are listed here as well for you. And similar to Arcadia, we do have their discount that you would certainly get. Uh, we're not the 70%, but we're more of a 50% rate where you get half price of what it is for each course uh, per credit. And then you'll also be able to take some courses if you like to do so. Now with our requirements, we're a little different. Uh, what we tend to do is get clearances for the faculty members in order to teach the class. So the way it works is as a student is interested, they can certainly go on our public website to kind of see the courses that are allowed for the academic term which you're looking to take courses. And once they decide the term which you're looking to take courses, what then happens is you go online to fill out a non-degree form for Penn State. And once you fill out the non-degree form, that would then come over to me. And then I can see the course of interest that you would like to take. And once that happened, I check to see if that faculty member has the clearances to be able to, take, to teach the course and for the student to be able to take that course. And once the faculty has the clearances, it's a green light. I can certainly just review your SATs, your transcripts. And one thing I would add here is for us, at least it's also indicated on our website, but you do need to have recommendation letters from a counselor as well as a, a 
approval from a guardian or a parent from home to say, yes, I am allowing my child to take the dual enrollment course. And also from the counselor to say, I am aware that the student will be taking some courses, whether it pertains to be online or if it's in person. So as of now for Penn State, I would end by saying, we don't know about fall classes being in person just yet until June 15th. And once that day comes, we will certainly know whether we're going to have strictly all online courses or that we're going to still do the in-person or just the option for the students to be able to take. But that's all for Penn State. Um, again, I know this was being recorded, so you will hear more. You can also take a look at our website as well. So thank you. Oh, Lay, you're muted again. Thanks. Thank you. And JP Lutz from Manor. Hi, everybody. It's nice to nice to virtually meet everybody. Um, this was probably one of the most unique times that I've had uh, as a college professor, and I'm sure for all the students and parents, uh, you could probably agree. Um, I think a lot of lot of positive things have come out of this uh, this time. Uh, in terms of what's going on in education. Uh, I know uh, on, at Manor, we've really kind of uh, looked at innovation and uh, really improving our online experience, um, really because we were forced. Uh, we sort of, probably all of you in some ways, kind of got, uh, got, got thrown in the deep end and had to learn how to swim very quickly. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of positive things that are coming out of, uh, especially on the higher education side, when it comes to uh, class offerings. Uh, so typically uh, at Manor College, we would offer high school students the opportunity to come to campus uh, for in-person face-to-face classes. Uh, and that would happen uh, in the fall and spring semester. Uh, that being said, we just released, um, and we are actually like Penn State, we're, uh, we're in, we just started summer one, um, and we're we, on July First, we'll start summer two, and these are six-week accelerated courses, all online. Um, the cost uh, at Manor is three hundred dollars per three-credit class, um, and that that can really be any of our one or two hundred level courses. Um, so everything from uh, your Gen Eds, your basic uh, introductory um, English, math, science, uh, then to be, to more specialized. Uh, courses uh, that do not have any prerequisites. So uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for um, for any high school students who are looking for something to do in the summer. Uh, and uh, I think it's also a great opportunity uh, if you're not quite sure exactly what you want to do or what you want to major in. Um, any of the options that you're going to hear about tonight are, are going to provide you a wonderful opportunity to to earn college level credits, gain that college experience, and and hopefully help you uh, make better decisions uh, for where you want to go in the future. Good advice. Thank you, JP. And um, Ms. Dina Mabin, Gratz College. Hey, everybody. Um, Gratz College is very local. We're right in Elkins Park. Um, and uh, Gratz is the oldest independent college of Jewish studies in the United States. This year we're celebrating our 125th anniversary. So um, we've had dual enrollment programs for quite a while. Uh, our students are allowed to take up to six courses per year. All of our classes are three credits and all of our dual enrollment classes are online hybrid courses. Uh, the cost per credit is $300 per credit, and that's a 50% uh, discount on tuition. I could have the next slide. Um, for the first time ever this summer, we're offering a dual enrollment course at Gratz. Uh, the course is a medieval J Jewish history course, uh, Jews in Medieval Christendom and the Orbit of Islam. Um, all of our classes, as I said, are hybrid. So our live webinar classes will be on Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the course starts July 9th and goes to August 27th. In addition to the um, webinar type presentations, very much like this, all of the meetings are on Zoom. 
Uh, there are also asynchronous materials that are posted in our learning management platform. Uh, things like video clips, audio clips, websites, um, and reading materials, as well as forum discussions and short assignments. All of that is posted uh, online as well. And final slide for us. So in the fall, uh, and this is just a partial listing because I'm still negotiating additional courses, uh, but we have a number of dual enrollment courses in Jewish studies. One is putting the text in context which is looking at the Bible uh, through a literary and historical lens. Uh, we have a course on Israel in the Middle East and a course on models of Jewish leadership. And right now I'm just adding a course on uh, Holocaust studies on rescuers and resistance during the Holocaust. In addition, we have a variety of Hebrew and Yiddish courses that we offer and in the fall, uh, Modern Hebrew 1 and Biblical Hebrew 1 will both be offered. For students that have taken a lot of Hebrew courses in the past, we'll also be offering Modern Hebrew Level 3 in the fall, and also a Yiddish course, uh, Yiddish 1. All of these courses meet uh, asynchronously as well as synchronously on a schedule. The Hebrew classes typically uh, the modern Hebrew classes typically are on Mondays and Thursdays. The Yiddish class typically is on Sunday night and Wednesday night, and Biblical Hebrew is on Wednesday evening. All of our, all of our dual enrollment courses meet in the evenings or on Sundays. And that's what I have for now. Thank you, Dana. Thank you. And um, Mr. Michael Harcum from Montgomery County Community College. Hi, thank you so much. And for our colleague who's helping out with the PowerPoint, I'm probably going to need you a ton right here, kind of putting you to work. Uh, my name is Michael Harcum. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions and Dual Enrollment here at Montgomery County Community College. Uh, could we go to the next slide? Awesome. So just a little bit about our locations, where we're located. Our closest location to the Sheltonham area is probably going to be our central campus and Bluebell. Very beautiful campus. We have an advanced technology center there with the state of the art uh, TV production studio where Comcast come and broadcast monthly. Of course, not while we're in the epidemic. Um, we do have a radio station there, which is fantastic. And even an observator observatory deck at the top. If you're interested in looking at the stars and moon and you catch a good evening. Um, the West Campus is located in Pottstown. If you're an aspired chef, we do have our Culinary Arts Institute in Lansdale. And our most popular way of learning right now is our virtual campus. And I'll talk in more detail about that on our next slide if we can go to that one. All right, I skipped the slide, so I apologize. This is actually one of my favorite slides. At Montgomery County Community College, we have very high transferability. What I like about this slide is it just talks about our transfer agreements. Uh, a lot of our dual enrollment students, they take a ton of classes while they're in 11th grade, so sometimes their sophomore year, if they get special approval from the high school or even their senior year. And this is one of those things, guys, even if it's not with Montgomery County Community College, this is literally one of those programs that I tell parents, take advantage of it. Uh, it it's an opportunity to save a ton of money and still have a fantastic outcome. If it was available when I was in high school, I assure you I would have hopped on board. What I like about this slide, again, it just shows some of our transfer partner schools that accept in many cases up to 100% of our transfer credits. And again, if the school's not listed here, a lot of other schools do accept our credits too. You just want to make sure you reach out to their admissions department to see what their specific criteria is. If we can go to the next slide. How much is dual enrollment at Monco? So we do currently charge $191 per credit. If you lived outside the county, ugh, it goes in the opposite direction, $345 per credit. Outside the state, $499 per credit. So what does that mean? Each course, if it's a three credit course, you're looking at $573 for the entire course. If you can go to the next slide. So dual enrollment. Our students, we're an open access school. They have the opportunity to take these classes in person or online. Our online classes are very rigorous. 
Uh, again, that's one of our most popular ways for students to earn their, their credentials at this time. And I'm gonna share some stats about our online program because we are not new to this space. Um, the other thing I always point out is that a lot of our dual enrollment students, if they end up deciding to continue and go to Monco, they take advantage of our honors program. We just had about a half dozen students get full, full scholarship rides to Bucknell University through our honors program, which was really fantastic. If we can go to the next slide. So at this time, I just want to kind of say thank you to everybody. And also, I'm going to just type in the chat box a, an event that you can uh, take advantage of tomorrow. We're having something called a virtual high school day where you can learn more about these different courses, some of the popular dual enrollment, which covers public speaking, the math area, computer science, behavioral and social sciences. Our natural sciences are very, very popular too. It's not uncommon for students to come to Mako take care of those prereqs, get those biology courses out of the way. Our next classes are starting on June 1st. That's a 10 week session. That is an online cohort. We also have July 6th and that's a six week session. So I usually only recommend that for students who are maybe not working, not super duper busy because you're packing a lengthy amount of schoolwork into that six week session. So um, hopefully you will all have some questions and think about participating in a virtual high school day tomorrow and learn about just ways that you can get involved like our brand new esports, which is a real, real popular growing phenomenon that we have right now. So thanks so much guys. I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Michael. It's good seeing you. You as well. And um, another opportunity for students is Marshall University. I'm speaking for Marshall University tonight. They provide online courses. They are from West Virginia. They provide these courses to high school students throughout the country. You may take up to two courses per semester. It's $25 per credit. And um, with online courses, whether it's Marshall University or any other online course that you might choose that is through, um, well, during the school year, it would be Manor does allow um, online courses and Arcadia is now allowing online courses. Um, Penn State um, has not in the past allowed it. Um, and Gratz, this year we've had some students take Hebrew during the school day so um, that's why it says you could complete the online course during a study hall period or at home. So anytime you have an online course, if it's in the fall, you could um, possibly do, um, do that online course during a study hall period. And the link there, Marshall University courses, they offer each semester a selection of their courses. They're very specific. It's called online college courses for high school students, OC. CHS and they offer um, approximately 30 courses in the summer and 30 courses in the fall. So if you're interested in Marshall University, click on that link there when you receive this, um, this document and you'll see what Marshall University offers for the summer and the fall. And you know, I'd like to add at this time with these opportunities from these different universities that it allows um, so many opportunities in different courses that you might see something in one, one of these uh, colleges or universities that is, is really interesting to you. So the more opportunities we have from our partners with taking dual enrollment courses, it actually opens up a lot of different opportunities in different courses. Um, for instance, uh, maybe you didn't know, but I think it's like a really, um, really awesome thing about Manor. They have courses in veterinary science that you wouldn't have at, at other colleges. So it's, it's good to look around at each of these opportunities because they offer different types. They can offer different um, opportunities for you to study and learn. And um, so we see I have, uh, there are a couple questions. Um, we'll continue to the end. So continue to post questions on that Q&A. And um, we'll start now. I think Charlene will go with answering um, how how is it done? How um, how how it works? How do we fit it into your day? What's the next step for you? So um, if you would um, thank you for uh, Dina and Michael and Alex and JP and um, and Ernest to um, 
if you just kind of hold in with us because these, some of these questions, when we finish up with questions, could be about um, your opportunity specifically. So um, I'm going to ask um, Lori Cohen, the guidance coordinator, she can help me with these slides. And, um, and also she would help me with answering any questions. So after you take a course, this is our school district policy, the college name and the name of the course with pass fail appears on your high school transcript. We don't put the specific grade that you receive from the college on your high school transcript, but it is designated, it is denoted that you have taken um, this college course during a certain semester. And um, the main reason for that is that a handful of years ago, colleges started to tell us that if the students put it on their high school transcript and the grade, and it affected their GPA that they were, they were not transferable credits. I don't know if, um, you know, if our representatives here um, have any specifics about that, but our school district is uh, determined about three years ago, three or four years ago, that um, it would be a pass-fail designation on our high school transcript. This dual enrollment, it starts this summer, as you heard from our representatives mention the summer options available in the courses for their summer two or summer three, because summer one um, started early in May. And so these are the kind of, of how to make it happen. This is what we've done in the past. We have um, years of experience with the guidance counselors um, working with students and um, on the schedule and the guidance counselors and I work together to um, communicate what students are interested in taking. I help students find courses that they might want to take and when it's offered. And then I often send an email to the guidance counselor because um, sometimes these courses were the times that they were offered were during the student's school day and we were trying to make that work. And um, in the past, we've um, had students uh, leave after seventh period, roughly, um, which is um, around uh, 1145, and the 12th period starts that you could go over and start your course. Or it could be later in the school day, more like our ninth or 10th period. In those scenarios, when you uh, leave school, um, you, you do not come back to school. You stay at the college, you finish your day there on those days. Um, it's hard for students um, to fit a course that you have to attend early in the school day and then come back and fit into our school day. So that's why you'll see on these slides that we um, usually have students leave after seventh period. And also, um, they, if you have a course at nighttime, then the guidance counselors will give you time to go home, get ready for class, do other work for your college class. So especially seniors, they have more room in their schedule than juniors because they've taken all their um, courses, required courses, that um, it's uh, an opportunity for them to leave and, and not return if they have an evening course. Elaine, excuse me. Yes. We did have several students, because I know I had two myself this year, that did do classes in the middle of the day. So they okay. came in and then left and then came back to school. Yeah. So I did think, I think I saw a question that said something about, can athletes do this? Um, so that is one option. You would just have to work very closely with the counselor mm -hmm. to make sure that there's not too much of a block of time that you're sacrificing for high school classes. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, we, um, we are as flexible. We try to find a, a, w a way to make it work. And we look at each individual student's uh, course that they're interested in and their schedule to make it work. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's true? I mean, this is... Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we're, you know, we're flexible. I mean, we like to put things down <coughs> kind of as a general rule or give you guidance. But we want you to know that if you have a question or you're try we're trying to work something out, to make it work for you, we will do what we will, we will yeah. find okay. ways. We want students to first pick the classes that they're interested in, but have backups, kind of like they do at, at the high school with course selection. You, know, you have your first choice and then you pick your alternates and then we see how it can work in your individual schedule. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have had that. We've, yeah, and we also, a couple of times we might even have 
uh, some students that might take a course first thing in the morning and then come over to the high school. But we always make sure that you have time to travel. We always look at the whole picture of, of what it would be like to, to, um, to do whatever you're you know, endeavoring to do with whether it's Penn State or Manor to get over to the high school. Yeah. But please be aware that if your student does take a class during the Cheltenham hours, that they have to then take another course in the spring semester. That the expectation is then that they will take two classes in the year, one in the fall and one in the spring. If they take a class at night and they don't lessen their schedule at the high school, then they have more flexibility with if they choose not to take a course in the spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lori, could you explain why? I, I mean, I, it's been a while since we you know, talked about that, but it might be better for you to explain. Than... Well, if they do it during the day, then there are holes in their schedules. And quite frankly, college admissions are going to look at that as a problem. So we want to make sure that they're taking a competitive program. Okay. All right, thank you. We, All right, let's we get ready for the questions. Charlene, do you have the questions you want to read? Ms. Collin, can you see the questions and read them? Yep. Um, can, so, can you? I'm going to start with the answered ones. Um, what would be your advice for a senior choosing between taking, for instance, AP Psychology or Psych 101 at a college? Is it better to take an AP level course or a college level course? And I see that Michael from Montgomery County Community College has said, we have seen that AP is a great option. Dual enrollment, however, doesn't require specific exam scores and can at times have higher transferability from the schools who don't provide credit for AP. So just for um, parents who don't understand that, not all schools are going to give credit for the AP exam if your student doesn't score high enough on them. But if they have a completed college course, they are more inclined to accept those credits. Um, do any of the other colleges want to weigh in on that question? Okay. I mean, I can speak from a what I what we have observed from college acceptances. Um, they want to make sure that you are still taking a very competitive program. So if you still have two or three AP classes and honors classes at the high school, it won't make a difference whether it's a, an AP or at the college. But if you're only taking one AP class and then the college course and then the rest of them are, you know, more of what we would call our fluff classes they're going to be suspect of that. So I don't think it matters as much as where you take it, whether it's AP or at the college, but we just wanna make sure you're having a competitive program in your school year. Um, all right, somebody asked, if you end up not being on campus in the fall, will they be offered online? Penn State said, absolutely. Is there any college that will not allow students to take them online? Okay. So it looks like, yes, the answer is all students, if colleges are online in the fall, high school students will be able to take an online class as a dual enrollment option. All right, open questions here. Would schools provide transportation during the school day or would we be in charge of our own transportation? Um, families are in charge of their own transportation. Um, we are, however, close enough to Arcadia that we have in previous years, have kids walked it. They just have to be prepared with umbrellas and snow snow shoes if they're going to go on but yes students are responsible for their own transportation um, doesn't matter which school you do a dual enrollment with to selective schools I don't think it does um, I think again it's more the competitiveness of the program anybody else have a different opinion on that Elaine have you had that found that I, I think that all of our schools have great reputations. I think that uh, selective schools are looking for students to take these other options, higher level options. So I think that if you are um, putting together your college application, I think any of these colleges um, that you would take a dual enrollment course would be um, a good option for you for your students for selective schools. Now we did mention in one of the um, PowerPoint bullets 
of um, transferable credits. And that might be part of your question here to selective schools. Um, highly selective universities might be more selective on what college credits they take transferable credits from other colleges. So um, that's something that um, if you knew what those selective, selective schools were and it really you wanted to make sure that the dual enrollment courses that you took that you take would be transferable to your um, to your degree then we we suggest that students call and find out if they would take the courses but you can also um, talk to the, your representatives here they also um, know where what schools have have taken um their courses and I transferable only, credits i can only speak for penn state because i'm a mom of penn staters and they actually have a transfer credit tool that you can go on and put the name of the course into the tool and it will tell you whether it's so you could put in manor college this course and it would tell you if you have the course number whether or not it is accepted that's really useful yeah i'm sure many uh, of them do mm -hmm. um Next question, would a varsity athlete who is required to practice, play games during or after school be able to do this? So if they find a slot or a course during the school day, absolutely. Or if they choose to do, for instance, the Marshall online class that they can work at nights or on the weekends, that's an option too. It would just be obviously more hours. So you kind of want to weigh that with the commitment of the sport, making mm -hmm. sure you're not overwhelming your child. Mm -hmm. We, we have had students um, go over to Arcadia, take a course at the end of the day and come back in time for practice. Usually um, our practices start at three o'clock uh, here at school. So students have made that work to go over, take a course and come back. Or if they're coming from Penn State or Manor to drive back and be back by three o'clock. So I actually had a swimmer once who, um, she did have her own car, but she drove to a lot of the meets she would meet up with if, if she needed to get, if the bus left already, she would meet, she would meet the team there. So it's just kind of giving some experience and my memory of working with athletes in the past. Um, next question, Gratz, will Gratz offer the continuation to the Hebrew class this summer or in the fall? Dina, can you answer that one? Um, okay, um, I think this is a continuation of Hebrew 1. Um, I do have Hebrew 2 listed for fall, assuming that we have enough enrollment. Um, this year I had to open a second section of Hebrew 2 because we had a huge enrollment in the, in the program. So it just depends on, on enrollment for that. But it is on the schedule. I didn't put it on the slide because uh, very few students will be qualified to enter the program that way. Okay. Um, we answered the question about dual enrollment. If registration has already happened for next year's classes at the high school, how do students who might be interested in dual enrollment figure out whether they can fit this into their schedule and what classes they are already registered for? Great question. So counselors have started reviewing students' schedules for um, to get them ready for next year, but we are nowhere done the process yet. So there's still plenty of time. Um, so if your student has an interest, um, Elaine, did you say when the class list would be available? I have, I have the class list. Okay. Yeah. They want to do it sooner than later. Mm -hmm. They could reach out and find out what class they want to take, figure out the times, and mm -hmm. then reach out to their counselor via email. We can schedule a Google Meet time to talk to them one-on-one -on -one and kind of look at their schedule that they have built and how the timing would impact the, the schedule for next year. Um, like I said, they're not set in stone yet. We are starting to manipulate them and make sure kids are getting all of their required classes and as many of their first choice electives as we can. So there is plenty of time to do this by, before the end of the year. We just want you to do it sooner then later, only because classes start to fill up, we don't want them to miss out on anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when do, when will the students um, know what their uh, know what their schedule is? The guidance counselors, did you say, st are starting to reach out to them? Yes. So I don't know when. I think Dr. Hammond said that we may not be able to just because we can't logistically figure a, a, a concise and and 
easy enough way to get it to students, but in some time point in July, they will be made avail available on Power Scheduler. But I can tell families, no news is good news. If you are not hearing from the counselor in the next week or two, it means that they got it at the minimum all of their requested classes for in terms of the required classes rather. Okay. And, and even though this year is so different and poses kind of new challenges or just kind of new ways of doing things, but, um, but we have this experience. This has often been um, the part that it takes us a couple of weeks and the students to look at their, their, uh, what's offered that they might want to take in one of the, at one of these uh, colleges. So that's not changed. I mean, we, we still um, know that students are going to look at the courses. We're going to make it work. We're going to talk uh, to the guidance counselors. We're going to see what's possible and kind of manipulate the schedule. Uh, in the past, their students um, have had to make some choices of um, usually electives that maybe they thought they were going to take just to free up their schedule. But sometimes they might have a difficult choice be ta between taking a college course and something else that um, was a course that they had planned to take. So, so that's, that's, and it, that's something that we know happens as well. Wouldn't you say, Mrs. Cohen, that Absolutely. kind of... Yeah. And I would just encourage you to have conversations with your counselor. Like I said, request a Google Meet opportunity. That way, if parents want to jump in <clears throat> with the counselor, you can do that. But before you do that, I would reach out to Ms. McGoldrick and get a list of the classes and have an idea of the time frame you're looking at to take. Mm -hmm. Just so that can help dictate your course selection at the high school. Right. And right now on the on this uh, presentation slides, you can click on each of the slides for these colleges and look at their uh, course offerings. And you're you know you're looking for introductory courses, 100, 200 level, and um, some students do have some AP. Um, they have some uh, scores, three, four, five, and AP tests, and um, they might. Um, meet the prerequisites of some of the colleges. So I have to say, I don't know if they would um, jump in here and, um, and um, you know, support what I'm saying, but we do, we, for instance, we've had students take higher level math courses because they've either finished higher level math courses here or they've taken AP math courses or um, some other AP courses that um, the colleges have accepted uh, as meeting the prerequisites for uh, absolutely. Level. I can jump in just to support what you're saying, Elaine, because I have a few students from Shellham. Actually, I just had one email me today saying I need to know what courses are available for me to schedule my fall. Um, so everything that I'm hearing is absolutely true, and I can back it up. But I do have some students that took higher level math courses, which are not the intro courses. I can certainly say that, and mm -hmm. just other courses that they've taken AP courses just to receive. So that's certainly mm -hmm. something that is okay. case by case. And we're certainly willing to work with the students. So if they're challenging themselves, we're also willing to work with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure, um, ask, because all of our partners here, all the college partners, you can see they're really nice people. They're very helpful. They're very friendly. And, um, you know, so it's always, we always ask and, and it's a kind of an open, uh, communication about what's available and and would it be possible so um, so if you think you might uh, meet the prerequisites um, let us know or you know just kind of ask us and we'll ask them two more questions popped up June 8th is around the corner which I knew earlier if interested in a summer course do we still need to contact the counselor by 6 8 so I would tell you that I, I cannot believe we are going to hold June 8th as a firm deadline, only because I don't believe kids will see their schedules before that. So we may have a period over the summer that people can request changes to their schedule mm -hmm. for electives. However, we would like dual enrollment to be set up because oftentimes kids who are doing dual enrollment tend to be kids who are also taking courses that only meet once or twice a day in the schedules. So we want to make sure that we can help your students get the best schedule for the year. Um, counselors, staff is working until I believe it's June 17th. So I would suggest that you do this as soon as possible. Um, you know, certainly take a few days and look at the courses Mrs. McGoldrick has. Talk to your family, talk to your child, talk to the counselor. But we would recommend that you reach out to the counselor before um, June 
15th when kids last day is because and to try to get this resolved so you have a schedule in place. And then if a student takes a college history class, would it count towards the CHS graduation requirements for history classes? No, it would not. Um, requir requirements are, for graduation are fulfilled by CHS teachers. These would be electives in addition to, to classes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct still, Ms. Collins? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. That's how we've done it for years. So, mm -hmm. okay. Hmm. But we do often have kids, if they're interested in history or politics, for instance, take additional history classes just because mm -hmm. that's their interest and then that supports their college applications by making them look stronger. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? All good questions. Thank you everyone for your questions. And um, please, uh, my, my email address is emagoldrick at cheltenham.org. And if you have any questions, you know, right after this, if something, if you think of something, please email me right away. Uh, email me, the student can uh, email me with their interest and we can start talking and, and looking at the different sites. So this was an opportunity for us to kind of communicate to the school community about dual enrollment. And, um, and now I can, you know, start working individually with students on this. So, um, so I'm here for you to do that. And all of your counselors are familiar with scheduling dual enrollment. We've been working on this for many years now. So please reach out once you get the list of classes from Elaine, reach out to your student's counselor and schedule a time to talk to them and how to make this work in their schedule. Mm -hmm. And I work closely with the guidance counselors. If you contact the guidance counselor, they let me know. If I know of anything and trying to fit into the day, then I let the guidance counselors know. So it's kind of the three of us together, putting our heads together um, if we need to. And the summer courses, uh, you know, you might, students might as, um, I don't know, JP might have said it, JP Lutz from Manor, that um, some of you might be looking for something to do this summer. I feel bad for students that had their summer plans with, with camps, with uh, employment, uh, with other programs that you apply to. So maybe you're thinking of, you know, taking a course, maybe the thought of engaging yourself intellectually over the summer, you can put it on your list of, of things to do and, and to have a productive and enjoyable summer. So online courses are great because you can still, um, if it's an online course, you can still travel and do other things if, if we get to travel. So, um, so if you if you look at if you're thinking about the summer, maybe um, you might not have thought about it before, um, maybe six months ago, but now you might think about it more that we could get started on that right away and I would get the right forms to you and take the next step. So I'm kind of the keeper of all the forms and all that kind of detail that um, that I would make sure that you have everything turned in and um, and help you with that. And I would also be the the conduit to get any um, of your transcripts sent to these colleges as well. So, and just so you know, on college applications, they ask you to enter your high school information and then they also ask you to enter any colleges you've taken. So colleges will know that you've done this from the very instant you submit your application. It's a good option. And I think the idea of doing it this summer, it, um, many of these are going to save you a lot of money once your kids get to school as a freshman or in co college as opposed to taking these classes as high school students. Okay. All right. All right. And well, yeah. uh, thank you for your uh, comment for the, for the evening. And we hope that you found the information helpful to you. And we're here for you, all of us. And we're excited for you. We're excited for your future. And it's a bright future. So keep on smiling, I'm smiling. And also if you see on the side on the chat, you can see um, some of the high schools have put their links to information about dual enrollment. Um, and I, I assume that'll be part of the recording as well. Okay, all right, have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.